So I kind of just wanted to figure out how did you develop your coaching style over time? How did you know, Frank as a player, then coach, and how you've kind of become the coach that you are today? So if you can, how has your coaching style evolved over time? You'll probably find this funny, but I'm a lot calmer than I was when I started back in uh, 1985, where I didn't know how to teach, and uh, uh, I really didn't know basketball, and, uh, and I was coaching guys that were five years younger than me from my neighborhood. And uh, uh, so every time I walk onto the floor, that's what it is to me. It's, it's my neighborhood. It's, uh, uh, I'm coaching guys. I remember how hard people work for me uh, to give me a chance to move forward in life. And uh, uh, when I started coaching, I was coaching the guys in my neighborhood that, that knew me as Frank. And I was just that next older guy that, that uh, was trying to help them uh, find a way to uh, move forward in life. Was there a coach that maybe you played under when you were younger or that you coached under that their style may have rubbed off on you and that you use it, that style influenced you as a coach? Yeah, I mean, the only person that ever directly, personally impacted my life uh, in basketball, uh, number one was my grandma, that's who, who, who introduced me to basketball, but then my high school coach, Marcos Rodriguez. He, uh, um, you know, he had an unbelievable passion for basketball. He had an unbelievable passion uh, to, for all of us to utilize basketball as a means to, uh, to improve our lives, to help our families, to move forward, and, and to impact the people in our lives. That's, uh, he never made it about winning and losing games. It was about uh, impacting people, and, uh, and that's where I learned it from. And, uh, and then as I got older, uh, growing up in South Florida, uh, we had no, no college basketball in Miami in the early 80s. Uh, we didn't have any pro basketball. Uh, so what you did is you watched television, and uh, there were two programs that, uh, that I used to just love watch and play. One was North Carolina with Coach Smith, and the other one was Duke uh, when Coach K had first taken over. And, and, and those are two schools that I kind of followed and, and watched closely, and their consistency and, and their, their excellence was, uh, was impressive. And then I'm lucky because uh, the coach that I made a connection with uh, uh, through – just recruiting and, and just camps and all, all the above uh, was Bob Huggins, who's become a, 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 like a brother. And, uh, uh, and I was fortunate enough to work for him. And uh, just, uh, uh, I'm extremely lucky. I've had people like that in my life. Was there ever like a particular moment when you were coaching that made you a coach? Like, you know, you were leading a team, but there was a particular moment where you're like, I'm a basketball coach now, that like really almost defines your style or, or you as a coach? Um, my, uh, um, my high school coach just kind of called me in the spring of 85 and, and, uh, and he said, hey, uh, I need you to drive this group of 15-year-olds up to Orlando. And uh, I said, what am I doing this for? He said, well, if you're going to be my JV coach, uh, I need you coaching these kids in AAU basketball. I had no idea what coaching was about, nor do I know why he asked me to do that. Uh, but, uh, but I did it, and, uh, and then you fast forward for a year, so now I'm the junior varsity basketball coach, and, and you're looking at, you know, February of 86. God, I'm getting old, I don't remember this stuff. February of 86, kind of that time period, uh, we, were, we were in a bad losing streak. Uh, we, I, I didn't know coaching. I didn't understand X and O's. Uh, uh, there were guys from my neighborhood, and, and we had lost like five or six in a row. Uh, and uh, we went into a, a rival school, and uh, unfortunately, uh, there was a, a fight in the game. And uh, it, it was minor, it wasn't a big brawl. Uh, it was just a, I shouldn't say a fight, it was more of a confrontation. And uh, the, the youngest person on our team uh, was our backup point guard, uh, was the one that didn't take a step back. And uh, at that moment, I saw the kind of courage that those kids had developed during the course of the year, uh, that even though we had lost some games, uh, the, the fight that they had uh, was something that, that I just enjoyed being around. And from that point forward, I said, I want to keep doing this for the rest of my life. And uh, uh, I'm, here we are 30 years later, and I'm fortunate enough to continue to do this. Now on the team, you have so many different roles and so many different personalities. Everyone, you know, all coaches have a style, but do you find that you have to adjust your style or coach each player separately in a different way? That's education. That's when you're a mathematics teacher, you can't just put the assignment on the board and expect everyone to, 
to understand uh, what the assignment is. Uh, you can't just uh, uh, preach and expect everyone to retain what you preached. Uh, you can't just have handouts for people and expect them to read it and, and, and embrace it. Uh, you, you have to learn how to touch everybody. And, uh, you know, I have a personality of, of how I do things, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's my job to understand the ones that need to listen. It's my job to understand how to touch them, how to embrace them, uh, to, to get them excited about what we're trying to do. Uh, and that's, uh, uh, unfortunately, in society, uh, we, we've, I think, in education, we have forgotten that. And uh, we, we just uh, think that there's one way to teach everybody and that everyone should teach the same way. And, and then the, the young people that, that uh, maybe don't understand that one technique, we label them as having some kind of disability. And uh, I think we've lost touch with the important stuff, which is, uh, uh, you have to educate everybody and everyone learns differently uh, and, uh, and it's our jobs as the older person, as the educator, uh, to understand the different ways that we have to touch our audience, which are the young people. I recently interviewed P.J. Dozier and he said a very cool quote about you. He said that, you know, people will complain about Frank's yelling, but he is one of the most extraordinary gentlemen I've ever met. With that quote, that shows that you're kind of able to balance discipline but then also being someone that your players can come to in a crisis or need and, and still use and still have that mentoring coaching role how do you balance the two I, I never knew where yelling is degrading I, 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 I mean I can say something to you right now in a, in a very low monotone voice and be the most rude human being that you've ever come across I never understood why yelling is considered to be a degrading thing uh, you know, yelling is part of the passion. You know, I had people yell at me when I was a kid, and, and it's the passion that I developed. I had people that didn't yell that were able to motivate me also. It, we're all different, and uh, we, we, have to, we have to be comfortable in our skin, who our personality is, uh, to be able to communicate with the people that are around us, the ones that depend on us to help them, uh, to, to get them to understand that we're genuine, where we come from. And, and there's one, one word that I live my life by, and that's passion. I have passion for people, I got passion for my job, I got passion for life. Uh, and I, I, I don't remember, you know, in that book that you go through chapter by chapter as you become a man and you become older, I don't ever remember where it says yelling is demeaning. Uh, uh, so, you know, for, for whatever reason, our society in today's day and age, uh, as soon as someone raises their voice, they're a bad human being. Well, I've been around some people who never raised their voice, who are human beings that I want nothing to do with, and I keep them as far away from my children as possible. So, uh, you know, but I understand. And, and my, my, my relationship with PJ, as it is with the players in our locker room, it's personal. It's, it's not about basketball. It's not about winning and losing games. It's about uh, sharing life lessons with one another, about me investing everything I can in them uh, to help them flourish and grow and become the men that we promised their parents that we're going to help them become through their experiences with us.